Okay, here we have a key and a jack from the 1867 Chickering 33B Grand Piano. And I have stripped it of all the old felts and leathers. And uh, take a little closer look at that in a moment. And they're just about ready to start being refelted. What I wanted to show you was the proper condition of the parts after you've removed all the claws. We'll go in closer with this. This is the uh, front mortise of the key and what you can see is that the front mortise consists of a channel that ran down the entire length of the key. Back here you can see the scribe marks for um, that type of construction in the sharps. But after that, there is a small shoulder on either side and the square mortise going down. And I can't seem to get the light in here, but this square face here goes down about, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch on either side and is flat to the face. What is of real importance is this face and that edge right there. Because what you want to do is to get the felt out and not take any of the wood. Um, the glue is water-based, but it takes a little bit of patience to let it do what it needs. Um, you know, a little bit of steam can speed it up, but steam's kind of aggressive and can, uh, you know, go way deep inside and do stuff. So I try to keep that to a minimum. But if the point I'm trying to show is this nice, clean surface is left. And it gives you a nice, clean, predictable mortise so you can do a nice bushing job. This is the balance rail button. And as you can see, it is, as I say, a little button of wood glued to the top of the key. And it has a bit of an interesting construction. It too has a square mortise in the top, straight flat sides, clean edges. What's different about this one is that it also has a little channel cut into the bottom of it, much like the uh, front rail did. And as you see, it goes clear through and the idea is the felt comes in the side and up that face from each side. And that's a little tricky to put back, but I'll show you how to do that. But in the end, these little channels have to be clean. And I might as well do a mea culpa now. I think I could have avoided this stain. This comes from wetting the bushings and simply the water wicking into the face. And I think I might have been able to beat this if I had uh, wet these faces. Because wicking can only happen in a material that is dry and able to take the moisture through. If I had pre-wet these, I think I could have gotten away stain-free. But those are regrets. But most important is to have all your wood, have it all clean. Try and never do damage. And here we have the jack saddle. You can see it's uh, cleaned out. It's just post with two parallel holes in it. And that's got to be recentered like any bushing center. 
though it is a little more complicated and we will go into that at the appropriate time. This is the jack and it has had a Uh, felt removed from in here and a tab felt tab removed from off of there and those will all have to be refabricated and remounted and I will be showing that in its proper time but you can see it's a nice clean piece and uh, it's ready for refelting. And final bits of work to be done on the key. This is the back check. And as you can see, it's just a block of wood. It will get a new piece of red felt on the front and a wrapping of buckskin. And back on the tail here, there's the damper lift tab cleaning up there but that will just receive it'll be refelted in uh, soft red felt and uh, I will show all of this but those are the jobs for the keys let's see damper lifts back checks saddles balance rail and front rail one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven different uh, refelting operations in the keys. So, I'll show you where we get started on that. All right, here's a pretty good view of the inside of the front mortise. See, it's just flat surfaces, and uh, the trick is to get a felt of the proper thickness back in there. And I'll sh quickly show you the steps through that. Here's the front rail pin of the Chickering with its new felts. Uh, it's a brass pin, it's polished, and it's about 145 to 147 thousandths wide and to match it we have these nice little brass calls and this one is 147 which is only a couple of thousandths off and the trick is to find the felt that fits between this call and the mortise in the key. There's our mortise and our correct paw. Let's see if I can show that there's a can you look see there's a there's a gap between these two. This is pretty thin. So you have to choose the right felt to fit it. Now this is my super technical system for cutting strips of bushing cloth. These are uh, socket wrench drawer dividers out of a mechanics toolbox, but they sure are nice and straight and they sure are nice to cut against. So I use these and the system works on just putting, you know, same thickness spacer at either end. Like I said, super technical. Anyway, what I would point out first is the correct uh, direction from which to cut your cloth. Um, cloths tend to have a, you know, a firm direction and a stretchier direction. When you stretch something, it grows thinner. It's just no way to keep things consistent. So I cut along the firm direction. And for this one, it pretty much was clear that my width was 
the width of the call plus a little smidge. So what I have here is my call plus a piece of a business card which is technically a smidge. So that goes there. Squeeze down. I think I will indulge. I was about to say always use a nice fresh razor blade at 10 cents a piece. They are your cheapest expenditure and they make all the difference in felt worth. You're better off not trying to cut all the way through the felt in one stroke. Use that sharp edge, tip it in a little, just draw it lightly across the cloth. We'll cut about halfway through and do it again. You feel almost no resistance and I usually give it a third stroke because I can feel it and then it comes up. Oh, see? I was a little optimistic there. All right. And that's a nice piece of sized bushing cloth. Now to test the fit, I generally like to take a couple of uh, strips just to overlap the hole a little bit. If you can see this one goes over to roughly the shoulder I try to get this one roughly the same. So between them, they both just tuck down into the hole a little bit. This is just the test. I'll show you how they actually install them. But we get the felt and the piece in there. Yeah. And the call slides in. And the friction isn't too bad. Slightly tight, but this is my thinnest cloth, so. And that's the test for sizing. Here I have some glue cooking. It's pretty, pretty thin. No, it drips pretty good, maybe. A little more water. That's really nice. And down here, pressed up, pressed up against the heating tray is uh, a bunch of calls. And, uh, Show you how we put that to work. Step one get a little glue on the shells. Thus, try and not get it everywhere. And get a little glue on the walls. Again, just a little dab will do you. And then we lay the piece of felt over the hole. And then there's, of course, this macabre kind of tool, but does a neat job of tucking the felt down into the mortise just so evenly on both sides and I press the plunger and it's nicely tucked. Take one of these rather hot calls and slide it down in. And there we go. Fresh razor blade, again slightly at an angle, and see, do this from the other side. 
रहा है and leave it to dry overnight preferably everything you do with hide glue it's always best to let it sit overnight that way it both dries and cures and nothing is tender and here's one I did a little earlier. See if I can't zoom in well. But you should have a nice clean faces. A nice flat layovers. These flaps that go over the edges their purpose is to keep the felt from being ripped off of the side if you ever have to take the key in and out. So those being well attached and nice and flat, see they don't interfere in the profile of the key, so it's part of the science of these things. And that's the front one. And there's only 87 others to do. Okay, the next bit of bushing that needs to get done is the key button and as you can see it's got a slot that goes all the way through and in order to get the uh, felt through smoothly it's best if it's cleaned out and I've simply made a little chisel out of an old um, ruler and all you do is, all I'm doing is feeling out the hole, making sure that there's no little bits of glue left. Sometimes there's just a little fiber sticking and that will stop you from putting the felt through. Okay, that cleans that out. Now we got to cut the felt. Again, spacers different set here set up to uh, make a piece of cloth just right for that little slot so one Okay, now this is the proper way to bush one of these, I'm not sure what the phrase would be, but uh, open mortise key bushings. What you do is you cut your piece of felt, cut to the right size, and tuck that down into the hole. Feed it in, take a toothpick or something, and work it through like that. Flip the key over. Do the same thing from the other side. Oh, this is fun sometimes. and push it out and then it pops out. Right. There we go. And that is the step one to get the felt like this. Let's see if I can get those nice and even. I like them even. 
There we go. I like that. Okay. And I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the outsides of these. And I will show you how that works. But And just for reference, a little bit of gluing like that. And then, I don't know if I can get this. But the trick is to pull these down and through, like such, till you get to about there. And that way, you've got glued felt all the way through the mortise. Take a toothpick or something, open these up a bit. Like that. And here's one of my specially machined down mortises, or calls rather. And you get them positioned. See? Like that. Shimmy those down in, like this, before you get to the bottom. There you go. Get that piece of felt out of there. Glue on them, they are a pain. Get those out of there. That lets you set your call down to its first and full depth. Make sure those all are tucked nicely, like that. And then, there, there. and that's how one of those is bushed. It's a little time consuming, a little fiddly, but again, the fold on the inside is to keep things in position when the pin comes up through. Otherwise, if all you do is glue a piece of felt to the side, you have a good chance of knocking that piece of felt askew, and it'll never be proper tightness again after that. So, that's the balance rail. Neat job. And here are the keys back in their natural habitat. You can see that there's the bushings in both sets of mortises. And with them, the movement of the key is controlled. And you have a nice, firm, positive feel. Let's see if I can get some images from down below. Let's see if it'll you can see the bushings as they're uh, inserted and how they follow the guide pin down. And, you know, nice smooth fit from side to side, keeping the key steady. And a smooth motion so that uh, energy is transferred cleanly. And here's the balance rail. Basically the same theory, only this one slides sideways. 
and it keeps the key steady side to side. And uh, that's what's involved in pushing the keys. Thanks.